Hi everybody, this is Noelle from Petites and we're here at Oakwood Village and it's time for what's in store for June. And June is actually National Perennial Gardening Month. So we are in the perennial department, one of my favorite places in the world. And we're actually in the shade section. So we wanted to show you this beautiful combo. Stella always does a phenomenal job here at Oakwood Village. And we have many, many other talented perennial associates as well. So come out and visit the stores, especially if you need some color, perennial color for the shade. So we're gonna show you this combination and it's just absolutely gorgeous. Um, kind of in front is this, what we call waterfall grass or Japanese um, mountain grass. Um, it's Hakankloa and this one's called Sunflare. And the reason it's called that is later in the season when it develops a little bit more coloring, it will have these bright red tips. So yellow foliage ends to bright red, really cool. And then right next door to it is this beautiful lady fern and this is lady in red. So nice upright vase shaped fern, awesome for the cut garden, nice little filler uh, fronds obviously, but real pretty and kind of fine um, foliage there. And then this bright purple is amethyst grand or grande amethyst. I can't remember which one. Anyway, it's one of those, but beautiful fuzzy foliage. So especially more de resistance when you're looking for that, look for the nice fuzzy foliage on this one. But grande is always going to kind of dictate that it's going to be a bigger coral bell for you or hookra. So this coral bell, you're probably talking about 18 inches, probably around 20 inches tall and wide. So it'll really fill out in the landscape. And then we actually coupled it with, now I don't know if Taylor can get a close up on this, but there is a beautiful kind of purpley blue, blue jangles, macrophylla hydrangea. And um, they have really colored up nicely this year. And of course that blue color comes from lowering the pH around your macrophylla hydrangea. So blue jangles colors up nice and bright blue, especially with lower pH. Let's look at this one too. And I wanted to show you just again in the shade garden, always looking for a lot of different sort of foliage textures and foliage colors. And so this one right here is a variegated Brunera. Sometimes we call it uh, Chinese forget-me-not, false forget-me-not. Oh my gosh, bug loss. There's a lot of names for this plant. You're seeing the remainder of the spring flowers there. So those are those blue forget-me-not flowers. And when it's done blooming, you can go ahead and cut those flower stems back. But look at this beautiful heart-shaped foliage, really thick, creamy margin, beautiful green centers on that. And again, these are super fuzzy. So they're a great de-resistant uh, plant. And then you have forever red coral bells. So again, you know, huge contrast between the purple that we had over here in Grande Amethyst and this forever red, just beautiful sort of burnt copper right now, really, really pretty. Nice little um, blush pink flowers or bells on it. And then this is actually by um, Visions Astilbe. So Astilbe, the Vision series, we love because it has such thick fern-like foliage, real fuzzy again, so really, really deer resistant, beautiful thick fuzzy stems. This is actually Visions in Red, and you'll notice you'll see the red stems in between the leaflets. And then of course your flowering stalks are also going to be red and then filling out to these beautiful like candle-like spires. So they really are gorgeous. That, that trio right there, just fantastic for a shade garden. So again, really we're looking at about six hours or less of direct sunlight for these plants to do well. They typically like a little bit of moisture. So average moisture to a little bit more and they'll do perfect for you in the shade. I've got one more shade combo that I wanted to show you for perennials and it's over here. And um, this is a, kind of a, a cool plant in the respect that it sort of looks prehistoric. This is Ligularia. Sometimes people call it yellow shot or yellow rocket. This is actually called bottle rocket. And you see the foliage, really big sort of scalloped leaves, gorgeous. Then it produces 
yellow kind of spike flowers coming up from the center of the foliage there. Again, they're really good for wetter areas, part shade to shade areas. Uh, Ligularia loves that. And then it's coupled with, you guys have seen this before, this is chocolate eupatorium or joe pie weed. And what we love about it, of course, is the foliage, that deep, dark foliage. Um, but it produces a white flower, typically midsummer. Um, so white flower clusters. Again, I'll always tell you, if you don't want it to spread, because it'll spread by seed, and that's okay. It's a native plant, um, and it's so deer resistant. Both of them are awesome deer resistant. But if you don't want it to spread, you want to deadhead it so it doesn't produce a lot of seed because it will spread around in the garden, okay? But awesome, awesome, awesome. All of them are awesome shade combinations. One of my favorite sun perennials here is penstemon or beard tongue is that, that original common name, if you will. And what's really great about these plants is that they are um, native var, so they're cultivated varieties of a native plant of Ohio. And there's so many different colors and varieties. What's really cool about them is that they are tough, really tough in our clay soils, no problem whatsoever. They do need some good sunlight to perform well, but you've got Mystica, which is this beautiful dark burgundy foliage, taller stems, of course, and just kind of just a faint touch of lilac with a white flower. You have Red Rocks, which is a shorter variety, real hot pink color here, sort of a more ferny foliage, fine cut foliage. I have Electric Blue over on the other side, and you don't see flowers with this color normally because they are neon blue. Um, so this is a great one too. So if you're looking for penstemon, something that'll grow really nice in a clay area, give you some upright um, flowering, good cut flower, great for the hummingbirds. It's just, it's a phenomenal plant to grow for sun. Just before summer, the lilies really start to come out, bud up really big and bloom. Now again, lilies by no means have any deer or rabbit resistant. So you really do need to protect them, but they're so lovely and they're so easy to grow and they'll get bigger and more beautiful for you every year. We have Asiatic lilies. And if you look at some of the Asiatic lilies, they have very thin foliage. The foliage is very thin and strap-like. The flowers are usually facing upward and um, lots of different colors and bicolors. The maroon and white is pod high. That's what we're gonna say, pod hay. We have a white um, yellow here. This is tiny bee, just beautiful. But typically your oriental lilies are gonna be the more compact of the two. Then you look at, I just said the wrong thing, Taylor. So your Asiatic lilies are gonna be the more compact of the two with that upright flower. Your oriental lilies are gonna be the bigger of the two. Uh, thicker foliage typically, and they are just starting to bud up, but they have not started flowering yet, the orientals. The orientals, when they come out, another name for them is stargazer lilies. So lots of times the lilies will kind of turn their head outward and they are usually very, very, very perfumey. Beautiful fragrance to them, um, absolutely gorgeous. Larger flowers typically as well. So you see both as cut flowers in the garden. They really need full sun. They do very, very well in well-drained soils, um, but lots and lots of colors to choose from. So really combine them with, you have coral bells like black pearl down here. You've got some meadow sage. I have Adora Blue and East Friesland uh, Purple. They look gorgeous out in a sunny garden. We wanted to show you this real beautiful combination. Again, coral bell or heuchera with an Asiatic lily. This is looks epic here. Beautiful kind of peachy and dark maroon petal. And then look at this. This is, oh my gosh, is this peach melba? Peach flambe, okay? So peach flambe, beautiful, peachy, kind of coppery colored foliage with that lily, awesome. Nothing like Shasta daisies to bring in summer. And we have real glory Shasta. And if you look at this, this is kind of the immature flower just kind of opening here. Sort of has a primrose yellow look to it. 
but look at the full open daisy, beautiful white petals, real frilly yellow centers, great for those pollinators to land on. But coupled with this, this is Veronica or Speedwell, and this is Evelyn. And I'm gonna tell you, beautiful in the garden, they, they really complement each other. Big, bold, you know, daisy look with that spiky kind of purple color, just gorgeous. We moved into the nursery and we just wanted to show you a real quick combo that you could plant together, no problem. All these would work very nicely with each other. Right in the front border is that beautiful new little petite knockout rose. And you know, miniature rose, but full double petals, great red color. I mean, a deeper red than your standard knockout rose, which is more of like a cherry color, but nice short habit gorgeous little guy. And then right next door, we've got Lime Glow Juniper. So this is a low mounding juniper, true evergreen. It always looks like this. It always has that limey green color. Next to that is your Pieris Japonica. Um, we call this just Pieris, um, but the variety is Mountain Fire and it gets its name from that new foliage that's coming out. It's really filling out nicely. Um, and, and looks gorgeous, that dark kind of scarlet red. And then back in the back, we've got Twist and Shout Hydrangea. So that is a Macrophylla Hydrangea. However, it is a lace cap variety. So you see the big petals on the outside and the little tiny true flowers are on the inside of that lace cap. Again, beautiful blues this year. So we definitely acidified the soil out at the farms um, and so they're coming up really nice and blue. I wanted to show you one other thing. If you're looking for a nice little small shrub that is white flowering in the spring, this is Nico Duzia and it is. It's just these low mounds of really profuse white. Usually mid-spring is when they come out. They'll bloom for about six weeks and that's it, but they are very easy to take care of, very low maintenance. So, you know, a nice little option if you're looking for that white color um, right at that time of year, but kind of a great little patriotic garden, little, little shot of yellow to brighten it up and you're ready to go. So we moved into the shade of the annual department and I wanted to show you these because I think when we did our store tour in May, we didn't have them yet. So this is one of my favorite begonias this is a dragon wing begonia. And what's great about them is they are so versatile. You can grow them in full shade. You can grow them in full sun and any light aspect in between. Beautiful kind of what we call like wing shaped foliage. Okay. Um, obviously dragon wing, a little bit bigger than maybe like an angel wing begonia, but real glossy and just really sun tolerant and shade tolerant, always looks beautiful. So we have these beautiful flowers on this plant, um, kind of a typical sort of wax begonia flower, but on longer stems, and they just produce constantly throughout the season. So if you've never tried dragon wing begonias and you think I can't grow a begonia, you can grow these, they are awesome. If you're a fan of fuchsia, and you didn't know about some of the upright forms, we've got some for you. So we have a little upright, and this, this is more like a shade filler, if you will. If you put it into a hanging basket, it'll grow more upright than trailing. If you put it into a container, a shade garden container, no problem, fill out really, really nicely. So actually this one is just called upright red and white, believe it or not. And then this one's a little bit different. This is Garten Meister. Um, it is a true upright fuchsia, as you can tell. Beautiful kind of darker bronze foliage, beautiful orange flowers. Um, this one can actually go in sun or in shade. So it's real versatile again, just like the dragon wing begonia. But what we love about the fuchsias, of course, is how they attract the hummingbirds. So if you're looking forward to bringing some hummingbirds into the garden, put out your feeders, put out your fuchsias and you'll be ready to go. We're over in the lantana section and we love this plant. I know we've showed you them growing at Casa Verde before, but it is an excellent filler, especially for those very hot, sunny areas and container gardens too. So they work 
great in hanging baskets. They work very well in mixed container gardens. They work very well in the ground. They are truly a phenomenal pollinator plant. So you're, you're bringing in all the different pollinators to this plant, but also they are very deer and bunny resistant, okay? The only time I've had these eaten was when I had a few fawns born in my yard and they came over and nibbled on this right away. And then they left it alone after that point got a stomach ache after that. So again, all different colors, absolutely gorgeous. And if you're having problems with the heat and the sun, again, maintaining your plant material, try Lantana. They do work very, very well in those hotter areas, okay? We've got all different lucky varieties here. There's lucky white, there's lucky gold, there's lucky red, which I absolutely love because it has that mixture of yellow, orange, and red in it. But we've got some more coming down here too. And you'll see the tropical rose color coming in. This is Bloomify Rose, Bloomify Fly, no, Fly. <laughs> Bloomify Rose. So you'll see the pinks and still oranges and yellows will still top out there. And then we move into some of the other um, proven winter varieties. So we've have the citrus blend, which is really pretty kind of those, the burnt oranges and golden yellows. Um, again, Golden Gate is this beautiful kind of um, popcorn yellow, right? We have the, the berry blends through here. Uh, luscious, this is Luscious Royal Cosmo. So it makes you think about, you know, your tropical drinks or your um, mixed drinks. And then back here, this is Pina Colada. So this is really our tropical drink mix right through here, but gorgeous. And then right beyond that is gonna be Luscious Grape. So it's a little bit different habit than the rest of the lantana. And then the respect that it doesn't stay as bushy. It definitely does have some longer trailing branches to it. So this one's really nice um, in hanging baskets as well, because it does have those longer, uh, more flexible, I should say, branches that will spill down a little bit more. So beautiful colors on lantana. We're ready to go. We're by the wave petunias now, and you can tell wave petunias are just, just a classic multiflora petunia. They continue to bloom, they continue to grow. They really do such a great job in, in hanging baskets and container gardens, and especially in the landscape. And when I used to work for SeaWorld, we grew a lot of wave petunias. They just kind of stay very close to the ground pop up the flowers and then continue to grow close to the ground and pop up the flowers. They're just so nice uh, to have in, in multiple areas in the garden and so many different colors. And Taylor's gonna kind of pan through here, but we've got blues and silvers and reds and this beautiful bicolor. I forget what this one's called and I'm gonna find out for you right away. This is Burgundy Star, so pretty, but again, Bi colors are so nice, that dark kind of velour, um, deep purple color. I think this is velour burgundy, but just gorgeous. Really, really compact, as you can tell. Very, very nice and flat growing. And then just popping those flowers up. And you've got, you know, your pinks, your purples, your yellows, your whites still too. All great for full sun. Um, you know, again, warmer, sunnier areas, awesome. I wanted to show you some more classic annuals. Great, again, June for June, July, August, really moving into the summer months, but you can't get better than zinnias. This is all the Magellan series, so it's a nice compact, 12 inches tall, double flowering type zinnia. You can use it as a cut flower, you can dry them, great pollinator attractant, just, just awesome plant for, you know, summer color. And you've got all the different colors here, oranges, whites, light pinks, darker pinks, like a cherry, um, yellows as well. So you can't go wrong with the zinnias. And like I said, it's, it's, there are a lot of plants that attract pollinators out there, but this one takes care of your birds, your hummingbirds, your butterflies, your bees. I mean, it's, it's really a good, good plant. And then right here, we've got classic blue azuratum. I love this plant because again, stays nice and compact, just mounded in the garden. Uh, again, great pollinator plant and very good as far as deer and bunny resistance on this one too. So 
you can't beat this color and really combines well with just about anything out in the sun. Beyond that, of course, your classic wax begonias, your pinks, your reds, your whites, real, real typical, but very easy to grow. And again, one of those begonias, you can throw in sun, you can throw in shade. They do pretty well as far as, you know, pest resistance is concerned, real easy to maintain. You don't really have to get out there and do very much with the begonias, the wax begonias at all. Just let them bloom through, clean them up every once in a while, they're fine. And then of course our marigold. So again, summer classic, gorgeous, all the double blooming varieties, um, real pom-pom, you know, big pom-poms, gorgeous. And then you have all the single blooming varieties. I'm gonna tell you, go for the singles if you're really looking for that um, repellency to pests. So they're definitely a little bit more fragrant. So your singles are gonna be more attractive to pollinators, um, more, or I should say less attractive uh, to pests. They'll repel your pests um, because they're more fragrant. Double flowering types, they don't have that fragrance um, because of all the petals in the way. They just are not as aromatic. So kind of stick to your single flowering types, okay? And then basically you've got your classics for June and on and uh, just, just enjoy the summer and hopefully the heat and the temperature is coming our way where it's increasing. Enjoy.